Hello everybody, so my name's Mark, how you guys doing? So I get uh, some comments now and then on my videos about my awesome action figure collection. So I figure, you know, some of them are uh, positive, some negative, but I figure I'll make a video about my uh, collection here so you guys can check it out. These are, you know, you can see them on the shelves behind me when I make my videos, so. I uh, don't have a lot of light in this room, so if the light's all funky and everything, you know, too bad. So let's just start over here. This is my um, Marvel Universe shelf, this first one here. Uh, these are the four inch size. Um, so growing up in the uh, 80s and 90s, I um, had a lot of G.I. Joes and Star Wars toys, so I kind of like this size better. This is the same size as those. Um, I'm not going to try to go through and, and explain what each one of these characters are. I mean, there's way too many, but, you know, you can see them. You know, uh, a couple of the favorites are uh, Juggernaut there, um, uh, War Machine, Maestro. There's uh, X-Men, different versions of Wolverine. Uh, Thing back there. Uh, here's the uh, Iron Man um, Hulk Buster armor. I really like that one. That one is the very first one of these I ever bought, which is uh, Death's Head. That's a, you know, kind of an obscure character. I'm surprised they made a toy out of him. All the different versions of uh, Iron Man there, you know, they made like 16 different Iron Man figures. Moving down, uh, second shelf, more uh, Marvel Universe toys. Uh, you know, I got the Avengers up the front here. Um, some of these are actually from the movie. Uh, more miscellaneous toys back there, Star-Lord. Red Skull, Better Ray Bill, you know, uh, that's the Vulture from the two-pack that's in stores right now, um, Adam Warlock, etc, 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 right? These guys are like my favorite collection here so far. Well, maybe not my favorite, but I really like these. Uh, anyway, moving, moving on, this third shelf here are, these are DC figures. Um, in the uh, four inch scale. So these are actually kind of hard to collect for because they don't make these anymore. And so these figures are all from different lines here. Like you have this this main DC Universe line. See so Superman and Batman there. See how their uh, fists, their hands are like molded in the same way. Those are from a certain line. And then other ones next to them, these are all from different ones. Uh, these guys back here are from Young Justice. Um, this uh, big Starro, along with the um, Martian Manhunter and uh, Flash here, and also that Green Lantern, um, are from a 75 anniversary pack that came out. At Com I got at Comic Con a few years ago. A um, couple of other ones. I think that Harley Quinn is actually from a Funko. I think uh, it's it's like it's the same guys who make the reaction figures made a, a line of uh, Suicide Squad, which that's the only one I ever found, but I know that they made figures for the rest of them. Um, back here, Solomon Grundy, Grundy is from uh, the Injustice line. So, you know, they all kind of, they're all from different ones, but, you know, they, they all sort of fit in together in the same scale, so that's why I put all these guys together. Um, let's see, moving on. Okay, Masters of the Universe Classics, so... I just started buying these recently, you know, within the last uh, year, year and a half. Because um, when I was a kid, I had every single He-Man toy there is. I had all of them. Um, I think I was missing Ninjor was the only one I never got. I got every single one of these. I had the Castles, I had Scareglow, you know, the real super rare one. I had freaking the Eternia playset. And then when I turned 13, you know, you go through this phase where you're like, I'm a man, I don't need toys no more. And so I gave them all away to charity, like an idiot. And now some of those things are worth more than my fucking house. And it's like, God damn, man. God invent that time machine. So anyway, these have been out for a long time, and I've always avoided buying them because they're really expensive. The He-Man toys here, all the toys on these shelves, you know, minimum $25, $30. A lot of them are way more expensive than that. Uh, this Beast Man here, you can't get for less than a hundred bucks. Well, actually, I did, but <laughs> you know, you know, uh, most of these are fifty, sixty dollars. You know, depending. Um, so they're really hard to get. But so far, I've just started fleshing these out. I um, I got my main three villains, uh, 
couple of the evil horde going back there, or the Modulok, Octavia. Um, this big blue guy is actually from Heroes of the Storm. Um, I actually got that for free. That was a gift. That's cool. Um, back here, more, uh, sorry, the light's kind of funky. Faker, you can kind of see him. Some more He-Man stuff, uh, King Hiss. So, anyway, these are really awesome. And um, they're really expensive, and I've just been just recently collecting them, and they're they're. I should have just I should have been buying them from the beginning. They're fucking awesome as hell. These little guys are from um, blind bags made by um, a company called uh, God. What the hell are they called? Um, can I can't remember the name of the company, but anyway, these are available in stores right now. And um, the problem with these is that they're blind bags so you end up getting the same ones over and over so these are the only ones I've been able to find even though I've been buying them and I keep getting the same ones so I think I'm gonna stop buying these but I did get really lucky and I got Faker here right off the bat this Faker figure you, you can find this on eBay for you know close to a hundred bucks so I got real got real uh, lucky there anyway but these guys are kinda cool I like those down here, third shelf, these are actual vintage Masters of the Universe. Um, I've been slowly collecting these back again, uh, you know, but not, not going too crazy with them. I think I'm just gonna, I'm just starting with the figures I really like before I eventually buy them all. <laughs> right? I should have kept them from, these are not the ones I had from a kid, you know. Over on this side, these are various uh, Masters of the Universe knockoff lines. Uh, you can see uh, Lino from the Thundercats back there. Um, this guy is actually from a Tarzan set that I thought was pretty cool. Um, these are uh, these so these two, the the rhinoceros, uh, Triceratops guy, and the Skull Man are from a group called uh, a line called Warrior Beasts, which was a knockoff line of Masters of the Universe back in like 1982. And I actually had this this guy here. I had him as a kid. So I never had this one, the Skull Man. Actually, this Skull Man is worth a little bit of cash, um, but I managed to get him in good, you know, good price for him because his leg was broken. So I actually fixed his leg there. Um, these weird little troll things are from a line called uh, Troll Warriors, you know, or something like that. I can't remember, but anyway. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Okay, this shelf here. This is these are Pacific Rim figures. Um, I really, really, really liked the Pacific Rim movie. It's like one of my favorite movies, so had to buy all the toys for though. I mean, come on, you know, giant robots and kaiju, how can you go wrong? There's still a few of these that I still haven't managed to pick up, but I got most of the ones I like. You know, Cherno Alpha, Alpha. Uh, that one is freaking really cool. There's, uh, here's, um, what's his name? Crimson, uh, Crimson something. I can't remember that. I can't remember the name of the main character, but. Um, the Chinese one that was, you know, killed right off the bat, even though it was like the coolest robot. And then all the different kaiju. I don't have, I don't have all the kaiju. There's a, there's a, a non-winged version of this guy. And then a larger knife head out there that I still need to pick up. And I think one more. I think there's a trespasser or something. But anyway, these are from NECA and, and they quickly go up in value. Um, but they, they're really, really cool. And I actually got to see the uh, Pacific Rim 2 figures that were at Comic-Con this year. Um, we went by and um, shit, I should have I took video at Comic-Con. Comic-Con this year was fucking nuts, man. Anyway, but I'm glad to see that they're making figures for the sequels. Uh, moving on, this shelf is Kaiju shelf uh, number one here. These are just sort of miscellaneous Kaiju figures. Uh, uh, there's Gamera, Gamera the Brave. Um, this one is from uh, Trend Masters Voltron that came out in the late 90s. Um, there's a Harryhausen from um, 20 million miles to Earth, you know, and then there's a Talos the Bronze figure back there. This guy is from uh, Gamera 3. So there's different ones here. Um, some of these kind of go up in value pretty much. I mean, I don't really collect things just because they're worth money, but that's just sort of a side effect, you know, like uh, this Batra from uh, Bandai, that one's worth a little bit of cash, you know, probably 50, 60 bucks. Um, some of these get really, you know, the prices on these things can get really balls out, nutty. Okay, I had to reposition the light here, but 
so we can see what we're doing. Top shelf here, these are Marvel Legends and DC Universe Multiverse figures. Uh, I like, like I said before, I like the other scale better, but there's some of these that are pretty awesome. Um, in particular, uh, this Death's Head 2 is one of my coolest ones. This Hulk figure back here, let me put this light down so you guys can see what uh, I'm talking about. This, this Hulk figure is probably my favorite of the uh, Marvel Legends figures. I mean, look at that thing. That's the, uh, that's the face from, um, you know, the way Hulk was depicted in the uh, late 70s uh, up to the mid 80s right there. That's like right during when I first started collecting comics. Damn, that thing's beautiful. This is from the um, Incredible Hulk uh, face-off two-pack with the leader, but I never managed. I never bothered to get the leader, but this is the one that I wanted here. Um, this figure just rules. I love that figure. Um, moving on, so there's a couple more up there, you know, X-Men, stuff like that. There's a couple of uh, spawn figures in the back there. You can sort of see those. Okay, uh, this is... Kaiju shelf number two back here, so most of these are Bandai vinyls, um, you know, but there's a couple of different ones all sort of mixed up in there. This Titanosaurus is actually worth a little bit of cash, 80, 90 bucks depending. And that figure right there, this King Kong figure, is the most valuable one I own. Let's put this light down again so you guys can see this beautiful monster. This is the uh, Monster Arts King Kong for 2005, and um, so when it, it retailed for about $60, $60, right? And it's got swappable heads and swappable hands and stuff like that, right? And it's all super duper detailed and, and everything. And I've seen this on eBay now for more than $500 in the box, which thankfully I kept the box back there. <laughs> so, which is bug done insane, you know, nobody should be spending 500 bucks on a freaking toy, but still, look at that thing, I mean, it's beautiful as hell, you know, and I had no idea that it would be worth so much, so, uh, shit, I would have bought four of them, <laughs> right, let's set him down over here, okay, moving on, here's, um, you know, more kaiju, uh, that's, that's a Trendmasters 1997 Godzilla, uh, this one is uh, Gigan from uh, Final Wars, Bandai, Vinyl. Um, that one's worth a little bit of cash, too. Um, this one is, is uh, NECA 2001 um, GMK Godzilla, which this is one of my favorite figures, too, because this thing is, like, super beautiful and detailed. Um, coming down to this shelf. Okay, this is more miscellaneous kaiju. These are... King Kong figures here um, from the 2005 movie, um, which was one of my favorite movies. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the, the King Kong re retrospective I did with uh, my friend Raf Gonzalez. Anyway, um, these guys are worth a little bit of cash now. It's funny because for years you couldn't give these things away, you know, and then it seems like ever since uh, Skull Island came out, now they're 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars each, which is just nutty. Um, but these are, uh, you can kind of see here's the bull V Rex, the collapsing V Rex. Like, I never really liked, like, I like the sculpt on these guys, but they don't stand up very well because this figure has like this action that you're supposed to turn this thing and it's supposed to fall down like it's dead or something. Let's set that over there for now. Um, there's the climbing King Kong. This is the Photidon, which is the thing that chases the girl into the log and then before the whole V-Rex section, um, you know, sequence. Um, this one and this one, this guy and this guy are from the Skull Island Creatures Pack. Like, there's also a, um, a uh, kind of um, dragonfly looking one that I don't have. Um, this came in a two pack also, but I only have one of the stink bats. So still kind of collecting those. Um, these two guys, that one and this one, are from the um, Skull Island uh, new movie. And the toys for the new movie are kind of shitty, you know. They're like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. They're the right scale, but like, here's the Skull Crawler. Here's the only Skull Crawler toy they made. And it's like, it doesn't even, it's not even articulated. 
The only thing that moves is its jaw. You know, it's like, man, you guys could have made better toys than that. The mother long legs is better, but it's, you know, better looking, right? I mean, it, it looks more like the, uh, a better representation of the, of the monster, but it's very flimsy, you know? It's like its legs bend in weird places, and I have a lot of trouble standing this thing up, trying to get it to stand up right, so it's like, I don't know. And then they, they have another one of, like, some weird bat octopus thing, like a bat with, like, octopus head, and I'm probably not going to buy that one. It's like, it doesn't look right. But anyway, I was very, very disappointed. They didn't even make a Kong figure. It was just, like, they made a 15-inch one that is, like, not even the same scale as this thing. It's like, it's like they weren't even trying. Uh, moving on, here's the Muto from the 2014 Godzilla. This is a Bandai vinyl. Um, more Godzilla vinyls. Uh, this is this one's actually a bootleg um, Megalon. Um, uh, this one's worth a little bit of cash. This is uh, Orga from Godzilla 2000. So that one, you know, you could probably list that. Probably find that one for between fifty to seventy bucks on eBay right now. Um, shelf number three, or number four for Kaiju. More miscellaneous Godzilla guys on the left here. Um, this is uh, Hedera, the smog monster. This is the Japanese one, so there was actually an American um, Bandai creation figure that I've got up on the wall. And this one is actually a better sculpt, so I took that guy out of the box. Uh, this is the Big O from the, the anime series of the same name. This figure is worth a little bit of cash also, like uh, I can't find that for less than $70. So I kind of scored on that guy. I actually got this new in the store, so. And then here are the Primal Rage figures. Let's sign the light down here so we can kind of get a better view of these. Primal Rage figures, uh, from the left, Talon, um, Chaos, Sabretooth, Necrosan, this is Vertigo, Sauron, Diablo, and Blizzard. Wow, I can't re can't believe I remembered all their names. Um, these were, uh, I think, Playmates made these back in the 90s, so they were really cool. You know, I really like that game, even though it's hard to play. Um, these two guys weren't actually in the game. These were supposed to be in the sequel to the game that never came out, so they're kind of hard to find, but... You could probably find these for around 45 bucks each, you know. Um, Primal Rage stuff is kind of getting hard to find, too. Uh, over here are various uh, miscellaneous um, Ultraman monsters, you know. Uh, I can't even begin to remember their names. <laughs> but this guy, uh, Raph gave me that guy, too. That's kind of cool. Okay, moving on to our last shelf here. This last shelf is all Star Wars, so um, I've been buying Star Wars. Let me hold the light up here so you can kind of see. They kind of go back a little ways, right? I've been buying Star Wars toys for over 20 years now. Um, so these are for all from different lines, you know. Uh, some of them are, some of these are actually from the 80s, like this guy, you know. But most of, most of these are from Power of the Force up you know, starting in 1996 or whatever, right? So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I was always a really big Star Wars fan as a kid and as a young adult, you know, when they, uh, they re-released them in the theaters. I remember I actually went to a, um, sneak preview of, uh, Star Wars Special Edition, the first movie, where they, um, put in the CG, you know, Jabba the Hutt and where Han shot first and all that shit. I actually got to see a sneak preview of that. It was awesome. And they, uh, they, they bought McDonald's for the entire theater, and they gave us all a poster. And the kids got action figures, and I didn't get one. The, the theater-exclusive Luke, I didn't get that. But anyway, so I've been buying these for a long time. And I got a little Star wars to out after um, Episode three came out, you know. And it, it just seemed like that they just kept making them and making them. And they would make all these weird-ass, obscure characters that had nobody gave a shit about, like, you know, the freaking pod racer announcers in the back here, like, right? <laughs> Who gives a shit about those guys? But, you know, the thing is, I bought them anyway, and then they started making, like, weird characters that were in the comics and stuff, and then by that point, I just sort of stopped buying them, you know, once it, once it all became Expanded Universe, right? 
And which sucks is because during that period, that's where some really, really good ones came out. And I don't have those, and now they're really expensive. And now the ones for the new movies, you know, like, I'm not impressed. Like, they went through a period where they were, like, really detailed and articulated. And now the ones that they're making for the new show and the new movies are, like, back to the old five points of articulation type thing. And they're more for kids. And they actually have a Star Wars Black series that are for adults now, which cost twice as much. And so I'm a little disappointed in Star Wars, you know. So I, I don't really collect these as hardcore as I used to, but once in a while, if I see one, I'll pick one up, you know, just to kind of flush it out. But anyway, I really need to come up with some shelving solutions for these guys because they're all just sort of in a big crowd and you can't really see any of them, you know. Anyway, so let's look at the top of the shelves here, um, kind of moving up. This is... Um, a 2003 Mechagodzilla uh, Kiryu, Kiryu, you know, a uh, 9-inch one that's worth a little bit of cash. Some more Star Wars guys. Uh, this one is from Rebirth of Mothra 3. Um, that's a Star Wars uh, sneak preview, um, you know, a little figure back there. And then like pod race, uh, you know, people, uh, spectators, I think, 3-pack. Uh, moving on, okay, I can't really see the light, but that's alright. Uh, this Fing Fang Foom is actually a, um, Hero Click, Hero Clicks, I think. Um, but he's in, you know, he's in good scale with those size figures, so there's Deadpool shooting him in the face right there. Um, Raph gave me that one too. And, uh, another Mothra figure, here's some more Godzilla toys, this one is a Bandai nine inch size uh, from GMK which is like the best Godzilla movie in my opinion that's worth a little bit of cash this one is worth a lot of cash too and probably between 70 to 150 dollars depending this is a uh, Kaiser Ghidorah from Kaiser Ghidorah I guess however you pronounce that from uh, 2005's Final Wars and then Megagurus right there probably worth a little bit of money too um, this one is from Mars Attacks, actually. Treadmasters made that. Uh, as well as that, there's the giant robot from Mars Attacks. Uh, this guy is the 9-inch Destroyer from 1995, um, which I got the 9-inch one because it's in better scale with these 6-inch figures down here. So that's why I, you know, because they also, they also had a 6-inch version of this, and I was like, yeah, I'll get the 9-inch one. Uh, hang on one sec, folks. Okay, more stuff on the top shelf. Um, these are from Kaiju Big Battle at the top, so this is, uh, Vegeta's Sky Deviler and Dr. Cycloptus III, which if you don't know what Kaiju Big Battle is, it's, uh, like monster wrestling. Go to kaiju.com. This shit's awesome. It's like these guys dress up in monster suits and they wrestle and there's, like, fake buildings in the ring and it's awesome as hell. Um, these little dudes here actually made these and, uh, I cast these in, in resin and sell them at conventions and stuff and I'm planning on making a whole series of those. Um, here's some more miscellaneous figures. Uh, this is uh, this is Mechabot from Go Hero which um, as far as I can tell nowadays is defunct. Let me stand up on this chair here folks. Okay. Get a better view of these guys. Um, but Go Hero was a toy company. Uh, I got this at Comic Con in like in 2005. This is uh, from Giant Robo. This is the um, diecast uh, metal version. That one's actually worth a little bit of cash too. And some Ninja Turtles, vintage Ninja Turtles with the rubber heads. These are actually my Ninja Turtles from when I was a kid. I still hung on to those. I got rid of the He-Man, but I hung on to those. Uh, moving on, these guys are reaction horror figures from uh, reaction figures, which I didn't like these at first, you know, because they were kind of simple looking, but they kind of grew on me, so I've been collecting these slowly. Um, there's a couple of other horror ones I'm going to pick up too, you know, they have like Michael Myers and stuff, and like Pinhead, so. These four guys are actually from Burger King, <laughs> believe it or not, which they're more detailed than those dudes, you know, so I kind of like, you know, I liked this series, it was pretty cool. And there's a few miscellaneous dudes in the back here. This this Goro is from uh, Mortal Kombat. Um, they made G.I. Joe figures for Mortal Kombat. 
and then these two guys are from like a series called Monster Fighter or something, you know, in the 90s. Uh, they were pretty cool. You know, they, they came out to, to they're like, they came, they were contemporaries with Ninja Turtles, so. Um, okay, so that's kind of the big shelves here. I have a couple of little miscellaneous dudes around, you know, uh, some Teen Titans Go figures here. I love that show. Everybody hates Teen Titans Go. I think it's the best show ever. Um, some carded Ninja Turtles. Here's just some miscellaneous toys and shit. Some uh, monster wind-up toys. A uh, couple of those Cabbage Patch uh, kid, uh, you know, Garbage Pail Kid freaking vinyl things from Funko. Those are pretty cool. Garbage Pail Kids are a big thing, you know, when I was growing up too. This one is actually a Toy Biz um, Hulk figure that's... Uh, I can't remember his name, Zizaz or something like that. Uh, miscellaneous PVC guys. And then over here I've got uh, some 2000X Masters of the Universe carded. And some Mad Balls and stuff on that shelf. Um, this wall is mainly uh, stuffing cards that you can kind of see. There's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's a Godzilla. There's some Earthworm Jim. Um... That one is Evil Ernie, Lady Death, and a couple of uh, Marvel Universe guys. And I'm still putting stuff up on this wall here. Um, over here, Devo. I actually saw them in, in concert. The whole idea behind this is that it comes with all five heads, so you can just buy five of them and then swap out the heads. That was kind of cool. Um, this is another one of those small... Uh, small um, Masters of the Universe toys by the Loyal Subjects. Uh, the cool thing about this guy and why I left him in the package is because he, there's, a, there's a manufacturing flaw in him. Well, one of his legs is backwards. So, you know, that might actually be worth a little bit of money later. Uh, those are McFarlane Austin Powers toys, which I thought would be worth something, but are actually worthless. <laughs> and uh, another Pacific Rim. And this is just the stuff I got in my room here. I have a whole lot more out in the rest of the place. Okay, now we're in my dining room. Um, and we're going to start looking at uh, pop vinyls. So, here's our Supernatural collection. <laughs> That's one of my favorite shows here. So we had to go out and buy all the Supernatural toys. There's all the Castiel pop vinyls. There's uh, Sam and Dean, and then Sam and Dean in business suits. And Bobby and Bobby Singer and Charlie, who died in, in the show, they should bring her back. And these are some, uh, you know, Hot Topic exclusives there. Uh, here's the My Little Pony shelf. I like the show. Fuck you. It's an awesome show. <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah, these are, these are actually Mashems, little blind bag things. So the problem with blind bags is you end up getting, like, lots and lots of duplicates, but they're very fun to collect. Moving down here, Steven Universe, which is the best show on TV. And if you don't like it, we will have words. Um, most of these are, are uh, you know, pop. I think, the, I think these are all, like, um, Hot Topic exclusives, most of them. This one here's the flocked lion. We just got this in the mail today. So there's normal lion and then there's flocked lion. That's kind of cool. Um, I think there's also an amethyst where she's holding her whip. We haven't been able to find that one yet. And then over here is the Rick and Morty shelf, which is the second best show on TV. <laughs> Next to, uh, you know, Anyway, there's Squanchy in the back there, so I got I have to come up with a better shelving here so that we can show them all off. Mr. Poopy Butthole, there's, uh, you know, Snowball, and Rick and Bird Person and whatever. These are also little blind bags of uh, Rick and Morty blind bags that we got going in the back there. Okay, moving on. Here on this shelf, we got some Game of Thrones. Tyrion and the Khaleesi. Here's a pot vinyl of the Alien Queen, which my wife got for me. You know, those things are really freaking awesome. These guys are bendy figures from Archie McPhee. So I found this one years and years and years ago in a little tiny store, you know, 
and I didn't know it was part of a series. And you have this Sphinx and this weird monkey thing and Mr. Reptilian, I don't even know. And then this is like a, you know, Medusa kind of thing. And then there's like this purple Hydra, the regular Hydra. I love stuff like this, this weird kind of like, you know, I don't know. I love weird toys like that. So let's move on. You guys are seeing what my house looks like. In the meantime, another Doctor Who pop vinyl. These little, uh, these guys are from um, DC blind bags. These little DC heroes here, they're about uh, an inch and a half tall. And these are actual real figures, you know, you can like move their arms around and stuff, right? They're kind of hard to get to stand up though, so those are really cool. Okay, uh, Transformers shelf. I actually like the show and the move, you know, the, the shows, the TV shows for Transformers more than the actual toys. Uh, I had a few growing up, but they tend to break easily and they don't really look like the characters, so I don't really collect them. You know, and plus I hate the, the Michael Bay movies, I despise those movies, so it's like, uh. But anyway, this is uh, Revoltex Starscream back here. Um, that actually is worth a little bit of cash, but mine's all beat up, so probably not. And then just these are these come from blind bags, and then these two guys I can't I can't remember the name of the company that makes those, but there's a couple of different ones. I uh, got some more uh, pop vinyls hanging out up there. This is my cat, one of my other cats, and a big pile of laundry. Everybody ignore that. Okay, over here, more DC uh, pop vinyls. This uh, kind of, we got these in a cross thing. I think I'm going to change that because it's not doing it for me anymore. But anyway, Teen Titans, uh, Pop Vinyls, Batman and Robin and Batgirl and the Joker over here. And more Justice League guys and Harley and the Joker, of course. Over here we got uh, Deadpool and Gwenpool. Okay. Moving around over here. Here's the big kind of blind bag shelf so me and my wife we collect a lot of blind bags you know really really like these things so these are here's our little my my little pony these come from blind bags fuck you i like my little pony these are um i think the name of the company that makes these are zag zag bags or something anyway here's a uh, marvel villains uh, DC, uh, these, these were for the movie, these were for Suicide Squad, and then there was a Deadpool and, uh, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, which we never finished that. Um, across the top here, here's more, uh, <laughs> horror-themed uh, pop vinyls. I really, really like these pop vinyls. So we got Chucky and Robocop and the Alien and the Predator. And then Frankenstein and the Bride and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Going up, here's more miscellaneous little minifigures. There goes some Bob's Burgers stuff. Some Invader Zim. I had a big collection of these guys and I lost them. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, little finger puppets. always love shit like that. Um, this is from <laughs> a Transformers McDonald's Chicken Nuggets toy from... Uh, Happy Meal toy. They know. Okay, moving down. Superhero themed uh, Mashems. These also come from little blind bags. So we got some Batman villains there. We got the Justice League. We got the Avengers. Some Ninja Turtles. Spider-Man ones. And these guys are from... Um, it's like there's another... These are in stores now. They're uh, some kind of like DC Supergirl you know, high school thing. I think there's a TV show for them. And of course, My Little Pony. And Guardians of the Galaxy. Right on. Still need to get Star-Lord here. These ones are pop vinyls for Masters of the Universe. And my wife bought all of these for me. And I was very, very lucky because these are worth a shitload of money now. And I had no idea probably a hundred bucks each I've seen I've seen these in the boxes for more than a hundred two hundred dollars you know so we got here uh, Spike or Skeletor She-Ra He-Man and Hordak they just came out with uh, Trapjaw and um, Scareglow which I have the Trapjaw over there behind me 
had I missed uh, they had Scareglo at San Diego Comic Con at the uh, San Diego Comic Con and I missed it, which sucks. So I'm probably not gonna end up getting that. Uh, DC wind up toys. Um, we got these for a dollar each. So what the hell? They're kind of cool. Uh, Mad Ball blind bags. Um, and the cool thing about these is that on the package there was a serial number, so you could solve, you could tell which one was in the blind bag. So that was kind of cool. So this is series one. They they said that they were going to release series two yet, but I haven't seen them. More on my more My Little Pony. Yeah, blow me. <laughs> two shelves of My Little Pony. Um, these guys are a uh, video game. They come in blind boxes, you know. Um, so these are actually in stores right now. Uh, Dig Dug, Mega Man, Pac Man. There's actually a, there's actually a centipede and a you know Frogger toy, but I don't really care about those. Cthulhu, Cthulhu pop vinyls. Had to get all three. So normal, glow in the dark, and this is like a bronze style one. Uh, more miscellaneous stuff up here, but there's a big light up there, so I'm not gonna like try to shine the phone. Okay, these are Super Mario Brothers. Um, Fratura egg figures. So they come in a little chocolate egg thing like that. Kind of like, uh, you know, there's like an egg, then you open it up and there's like, this is the toy and supposedly there's candy that came with them. But these these were like really, really awesome looking. So I had to buy all these guys. Um, so uh, this little, these are also Super Mario, you know, from the same uh, thing. Um, come on, focus, focus, there we go. This little guy back here, this Donkey Kong Jr. is actually from 1982. So, that one's worth a little bit of money. Okay, these are little, uh, imported, uh, kaiju, you know, super deformed figures. Some of these can actually be worth a little bit of cash, but I don't think any of these are. Um, you know, various, these are from various sets and stuff like that. Um, I always like stuff like this, you know, it's kind of cool. Moving on, here is the complete set of, uh, well, almost complete set of Gravity Falls Vinyl Pops. Um, I think there's a there's another Mabel that we don't have, but this is like the exclusive one where she's got unicorn blood all over her. Um, these guys are from a set called Monster Women, which there's actually uh, a couple of other ones that I don't have yet. Like, there's like a Crab Woman and like... Uh, scorpion woman and some other things those are kind of cool and of course Godzilla and King Kong pop vinyls uh, these guys are from Overwatch got these at Comic-Con this year there was at the uh, at the Blizzard booth you could uh, pay a buck and get a coin and then put it into a little blind box thing and get these guys from Overwatch um, I can't remember the name of the company that made this, but there are like these little figures where they're like friends that hurt each other. So the idea is like there's popsicle and the sun is melting them. <laughs> right. So I thought that was funny. This is uh, this is also from that video game blind boxing. This actually goes with a shelf down here, but I couldn't fit it down there. Moving on, um, these little dudes are Marvel minis, and uh, they're hard. They fall over a lot, so. You know, I'm always constantly trying to put these back up. You know, here's the Avengers, some of the X-Men, the Hulk, blah, blah, blah. And comparable set with DC characters. You know, these were actually the very first uh, little blind box dudes that we started collecting. Come on, phone, focus, focus, please. Well, just imagine that that's in focus. Come on, focus. You can do it. You can do it. Focus. Anyway, whatever. Um, miscellaneous uh, muscle type figures um, not all of these I think some of these are from a, a series called um, OMFG that you can find online come on focus 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 um, these are actually um, this one right here is actually a monster in my pocket so like that one and that one are from monster in my pocket Okay, superhero string dolls. Oh, now you want to focus. God damn, I hate this thing. Okay, and then here's some Marvel um, pop vinyls. Okay, uh, this one, a friend of mine puts out a comic called Sally Sprocket and Piston Pete, and he had his own action figures made. 
so I had to get one from him. I will put the link in the description. Everybody go check out his comic. It's awesome as hell. And buy one of his figures. And last little bits of shelves. These are Trashies, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. <laughs> trashies and assorted knockoffs. I think these are knockoff trashy knockoff trashies called Crashies. But the rest of these are from different trashy, uh, you know, trashy uh, series here. I love these things. If I could, I would fill my entire house with them. But there are just too many. So anyway, folks, that's my collection. It's larger than... A larger collection than any man my age should actually have. It's probably unhealthy. I should probably not be spending money on this stuff, but, you know, it's only money. Adios, folks.